Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about one of my favorite things in the entire world, which is exercising. And so just because we are talking about food and the energy from food doesn't mean we can ignore the other aspect, which would be the exercise or any time where you're outputting energy. So in this video we're just going to focus on how we actually use the energy from food to actually do fun exercise stuff. And just a little bit of a disclaimer, I'm actually a certified personal uh, fitness instructor, and so I used to teach fitness classes back when I was in graduate school. And so I would teach kickboxing and step classes, and I also worked with Nike for quite a while to do some fun aerobics classes. So if that's something you ever are interested in, please come talk to me about it, because I really like talking about that a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But what we're going to do today is talk about exercise, and I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, so that hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to be thinking, oh my gosh, I really want to go out for a bike ride or a run or something. You're probably not, but hopefully you are. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is the basal metabolic rate metabolic rate. And so sometimes people just refer to this as your BMR. And basically what it is, it's your daily energy required to support basic body functions. Okay. So now I want to list three of these that are the most important. Okay, the first thing, whenever I talk about basic bodily functions, the main one is it keeps your heart pumping. Okay, so we want to know how much energy is required to keep your heart pumping. We also want to know how much is needed to keep your brain active, right? We don't want a dead brain, that would be terrible. And the last one is we want your lungs breathing. Okay, so these are your most three main basic bodily functions that have to happen all the time. Your heart constantly needs to be pumping, your lungs constantly need to be breathing, and your brain constantly needs to be active. So what we do is we talk about what's called your BMR average. So BMR average. And essentially what it is, is you have one calorie, and we're talking about nutritional calories, for every one kilogram of body mass that you have, and you need to burn this one calorie, and this is per hour, okay? So your BMR average is the amount of energy in calories that you need to burn per hour per every kilogram you have of body mass, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. To me personally, when I talk about your BMR average, it's easier to do it with an example. So let's actually just use me, that will work. So for Dr. B, I'm approximately 57 kilograms, give or take some on a good day or bad day, right? Um, and so what we're gonna do here is we need to convert our kilograms into calories per day. That's the first thing we need to do. So if we're gonna say that I'm about 57 kilograms, the first thing we wanna do is convert our kilograms to calories, right? And the best way we can do that is we know, just based on the BMR average, that we need to figure out a unit of one calorie per every one kilogram per hour, okay, per hour. So we know now, okay, our kilograms are gonna cancel out. We're trying to get calories burned per day for a 57 kilogram person. So now we're in hours at the bottom, we need to get today. We know there's 24 hours per every one day. So our hours cancel out and we're left with calories per day. So if we calculate this out, I personally need 1,368 calories every day and that is to stay alive, okay? So to stay alive, to keep my heart pumping, my lungs breathing, and my brain active, I need about 1,400 calories every single day. But, as we discussed in the last video, I actually eat closer to 2,400 calories every single day. All right, so the big question is, where does everything else go, right? So I, I have to eat our 1,300, so we've got 1,368 calories that I have to eat per day, but I eat 2,400 calories per day. So that is about 57% of the food that I eat, so of food, is used to keep me alive. Keep Dr. B alive. 57%, that's it. That's not very much. So the question is, where does the other 43% go? Because that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot of food, that's a lot of calories, that's a lot, so where does it go? And the answer is twofold. We have two different options. The first one is if you burn it in exercise, okay? So if you're active, that's the first one. This is the main one, this is the big one, this is what you want your food to be doing. So you take your food source, again, we talked about this before, whether or not it's a carb or it's a fat or a protein, you treat it with oxygen, you create carbon dioxide plus water, 
and we know that releases energy. So we're able to burn that food and actually kind of get rid of it. Alternatively, if you don't burn that extra 43%, it turns into fat, so you gain weight. What that means is your body stores excess food in fat. Okay, and I'm going to put it in quotes because I don't want you thinking that you have like a steak that's just sitting there. It's obviously been decomposed, but you definitely store it as fat. So the more you eat, the more exercise you need to do to burn it off. Because if you eat a lot and you are sedentary, you don't move at all, all that food, all those calories are going to go straight into fat cells. And so you don't want that to happen. So our big questions are, what do we do? How do we avoid gaining weight? How do we avoid being obese, right? So here's one table that just gives you kind of an idea of how many calories are burned per hour, and this is for an average human, okay? So let's start off by looking at the left side. If you go hiking for an hour, you're going to burn about 370 calories. If you go dancing for an hour, that's 330. If you golf while walking, right, not driving the cart, it's about 330 per hour. So golfing is a great exercise if you do 18 holes, so that's about four hours hours for you. Bicycling at a leisure rate is about 290. Weightlifting, a light work workout is about 220. Or stretching, even just stretching, so like a very, very low-key yoga class, you're still burning about 200 calories. Now, on the other side, the right side, we're talking about vigorous physical activity. So we're talking about a hard jog, you burn about 600 calories per hour. Heavy yard work, so all those lumberjacks that are constantly outside cutting trees down. I'm from Michigan again. So remember that they're building a lot, burning a lot of calories, so about 450 calories per hour hour. And you can see through here aerobics, that was my thing, um, and I still actually do a lot of aerobics classes currently, and that's about 480 calories per hour. I also do a lot of biking, so that's about 590 calories per hour, and that's if you're moving at a fast pace. Weightlifting, basketball, I'm sure there's a lot of basketball and football athletes out there, you're about burning about 500 calories per hour. So the second thing I want to look at is how your diet has to do with this. So let's look at how much exercise you have to do in order to burn this uh, the calories you just ingested. For example, if you eat an apple, that's about 125 calories. So you need to walk for 27 minutes or jog for 13 minutes in order to burn off your apple. Let's jump down to something more delicious like a hamburger. So if we want to burn a hamburger, we know, excuse me, if we want to eat a hamburger, we know we're ingesting about 350 calories. Just to point this out, a lot of the drinks at Starbucks are around that same amount. So my favorite, which is the venti chai latte, is about 390 calories per drink. As soon as I figured that out, I cut Starbucks out of my diet immediately. That's terrible. You don't want to be eating, or excuse me, you don't want to be drinking your calories. So watch those drinks. Watch your Starbucks. Watch those 7-Eleven drinks. You got to be really careful with them. But in order to eat a hamburger, you have to walk for 75 minutes or you have to jog for 35 minutes in order to burn that hamburger off. So it's a lot. Same thing with potato chips. You get 180 calories per ounce. Okay, per ounce. Not for the whole bag, per one ounce. Okay? So what I want you to do really quickly is a quick math problem. So I'm going to say for me, a typical weekend would be one bike ride. And my bike rides are definitely faster than 10 miles an hour. I don't know how you ride a bike slower than that, but that's just me personally. Let's just say I dance for an hour. I don't know. Maybe that's possible. Definitely go on two dog walks. That's usual. And we're going to say my dog walks are about um, 3.5 miles per hour, okay? Now, using the chart from above, so here, using this chart, I want to know how many hamburgers, how many burgers... Can I eat on Sunday night? So after a, an entire weekend of doing these activities, so of a bike ride, dancing for an hour, and then two dog walks, how many burgers can I eat on Sunday night? So you're going to need to use this one as well, this table as well. Go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did. There's a lot of math, and you had to pull some numbers off these tables, so hopefully you were able to do this. But basically, if I go on one bike ride, let's say we go for an hour, and it's greater than 10 miles an hour, then I would be burning about 590 calories per hour. All right. For an hour of dancing, if you look at the chart, we said it would be about 330 calories burned per hour. 
And then if we go on two dog walks, let's say it's an hour each, these are going to be about 280 calories burned per hour, and we're going to say there's two of these because we're going on two dog walks, okay? So if we add all of this together, our 590 plus 330 plus 280 times two, or 280 plus 280, we get about 1480 calories burned in one weekend, which is actually pretty good. That's a lot of exercise. So now what we want to do is figure out how many burgers that we can eat on this Sunday night. Well, we know that one hamburger is equal to about 350 calories. Okay, so based on the amount of exercise that I did, we would say you have 1480 calories burned, you divide that by 350 calories for the burger, and I find out that I can eat about 4.22 burgers on Sunday night, okay? So basically what we're seeing is that in order to eat about 400 calories or so, or a burger, you need to do an hour of exercise. Otherwise, that entire burger goes straight to your ass, okay? So you wanna make sure you avoid that. Eat well, exercise, drink water. Have a great week, guys.